This is AI6YM here making cases for the T41 software defined transceiver. The aluminum front and back panel here came as part of a steel bodied instrument enclosure. It's just an off the shelf blank ready to be machined into whatever we need. I liked this particular enclosure for the T41 because there's plenty of room for the modules inside. They can be easily accessed and worked on. There's even a little extra room for future upgrades. The front panel easily fits a 7-inch display and all the controls. Each of the front and back panels is very easy to remove and work on without disassembling the rest of the radio. The top half of the case comes off easily, whether or not you have those front and back panels on, so it's really a pleasure to assemble and work on the radio inside without the case getting in your way. This footage is sped up about 25 times. The design here is my own, and of course you can find the files on my GitHub. I'll put a link in the description below. Feel free to use and adapt that design. I'll only be making 28 of these enclosures. They are a lot of work to create. Each one represents about 12 hours of various machining and finishing processes, including several hours of my labor. Just the front panel here requires three different tools. The first makes most of the cuts, but leaves burrs and sharp edges. The second cleans up the corners so the display fits snugly. And then the final tool deburrs each cut and chamfers the edges. I just think a soft edge looks better, and it's much more pleasant to handle. I do have a few left if you'd like one. You can find them on my website, ai6ym.radio. They're sold individually or as complete T41 V12 kits. Each one is unique and handmade. None of them are perfect. If you're looking for perfection, I recommend sending the design files to a fabricator like Send Cut Send. These are handmade by an amateur in his garage and backyard. Once this run sells out, I might do a commercial production run of something similar. Doing a limited edition has been fun and a great opportunity to develop my skills. Many thanks to everyone for their support making this possible. The aluminum here is very soft, so I decided to anodize it to create a tough surface that would look good in the long term. I like to bounce my radios around in the back of my truck, so they need to be sturdy. After machining, each panel is polished. I didn't show that here. Just imagine me with a power sander covered in wet aluminum dust. Just chamfering the edges on the back panel as well. And this is the bottom panel for the case. It's powder coated steel, so it's tougher to machine. Luckily, we only need two rows of holes for mounting the circuit board brackets. I'll show those brackets and the assembly in a blog post on my website, and hopefully in a future video. The bottom panel here is deburred by hand, which I didn't show in the video. After polishing comes a degrease step. My degreaser is heated here with an old sous vide heater. I do all this outside, partly for safety and partly because I don't have enough room in my shop. The degreaser removes any organic contaminants like the oils from my fingers or anything that might have gotten on the panels during machining and polishing. Next is etching in sodium hydroxide. That's just lye or caustic soda. It dissolves the surface of the aluminum slightly and removes certain impurities. After that, I use a commercial de-smut solution to remove copper and other contaminants from the surface. 
They don't heat either of these, although they both work better above about 20 degrees Celsius. I just leave the panels in longer when the solutions are cold like they are today. If you do this a few times, you get a feel for it. Although, I should mention, please don't do this unless you have the training and experience to handle the chemicals and electric currents safely. These solutions can be very dangerous if handled improperly. After all that prep, we come to the actual anodizing step. Each panel will anodize for two hours. I call this type two and a half anodizing. I can't cool the solution enough to do actual type three, which is done around zero Celsius, up to around four degrees, if I recall correctly. The pump you're hearing is moving the electrolyte out of the tub and through a tube, which is coiled and submerged in another tub of very cold salt water. I use an old chest freezer just outside of the frame to extract the heat generated by anodizing, so the electrolyte stays under about 10 degrees Celsius. The colder temperature makes for a slower process, but a much more dense and tough coating than room temperature anodizing would produce. And this footage is sped up about five times. I'm just slowly ramping up the current over the first five minutes. That makes for a more even coating. And then a little jiggle on the tub once in a while knocks any bubbles loose. After anodizing, the panels are sealed in near boiling water for about half an hour. I'm using an old pressure canner in ways that would probably make the manufacturer very angry, but it's the only vessel I had large enough to do this, and it works well. You can see I've lost my daylight here. I can only do a few of these panels a day. This last one is coming out well after sunset. And then it's off to the laser for marking. What I'm doing here is just etching off the anodized coating to reveal the bare aluminum underneath. That makes a nice marking, but on natural anodization it doesn't produce enough contrast for me. Over time, the bare aluminum would oxidize and the markings would fade into the background. You can produce very long-lasting and high-contrast markings if you dye parts as part of the anodization process, but I didn't think that would look good with the white enclosure. It really looks like it has a great contrast on camera, but in reality, it, it just doesn't. I'm using Brilliance Laser Ink's aluminum marking spray on top of the etching. This product doesn't stick well to anodized aluminum, but it does great on top of the etching. The marking is very dark and durable. I actually made a mistake with one of the panels, so I had to remove the markings and of course etch and anodize again. It took over an hour of power sanding and chemical etching to remove the markings. I was quite impressed with how tough this product is. And I have no affiliation with Brilliance Laser Inks. This is actually my first time using their products, but it is an incredible product that I highly recommend. The footage of the first etch is sped up a hundred times. That front panel took two hours to etch. This step is a lot faster, but it still takes a while. 
This footage is sped up 50 times and takes about an hour on the front panel. And of course I turn the lights off while I'm filming like an idiot, but the laser does look pretty cool in the dark. There's not as much to mark on the back here, just the antenna connections, power, and USB. Of course, you can customize either or both panels if you'd like, which is something that I really enjoy about doing a limited edition run like this. I think the back panel here took about 45 minutes just for these few markings between the two steps. And that's our finished product. 73, and thanks for watching. AI6YM.